What's happening, everybody? James Hancock here. Just caught the first episode of the new show, The Young Pope, on HBO. Although technically it's not brand new because it premiered in Italy in October of last year. And I believe the first few episodes played at a few film festivals. So all the episode descriptions for the entire first season are already online. Spoilers are all over the place. So people got to be very, very careful about what they say, how they say it, or where they look. I'm going to do basically kind of a broad general impression at first, and then I'll announce before I go into any plot-specific spoilers just so people can enjoy the show with fresh eyes if that is what they want. At any rate, this is a new show from Paolo Sorrentino, who's a world-class Italian filmmaker. He made a movie called The Great Beauty a few years ago, which is just jaw-droppingly beautiful and enormously entertaining and well worth seeing. He also had his movie Youth came out last year, starring Michael Caine and Harvey Keitel, which was really good. So it's cool seeing a filmmaker of that caliber and that level of cinematic expertise taking a dip into the world of television because the result is what is easily the most cinematic show on TV. Whether or not people are prepared for that or whether or not they want that remains to be seen because this is not like any other show being done on TV. I mean, I think they spent like 40 million euros on the first season. They spent years developing it. They shot it for seven months at Chinachita Studios. It's got all the hallmarks of a major film production and the producers already announced that season two is underway. So I think they're very, very encouraged by the initial response by most reviewers and have to say that for my own part, I am in. I mean, I don't really follow religious politics too closely, specifically kind of Catholic Church and papal politics and that sort of thing. So for me, it's a unique opportunity to see inside the world of the Vatican, a place that I've never visited, and Jude Law is just absolutely on fire as Pope Pius XIII. It's going to be hard to say much more beyond that without getting into spoilers. I'll just say that this show has got a lot of long, nuanced conversations and, how can I say it, it's very adversarial and very combative and it's very Machiavellian and people are all maneuvering against one another. So if people like really, really intricate plot and watch people kind of plotting and scheming and maneuvering for advantage like an elaborate chess match without ever actually coming to blows, this is absolutely going to be their thing. But it would not surprise me if someone wants to know, like, where's the sex or where are the fights? I mean, if people, when people watch a show like Westworld on HBO, there's still plenty of sex and violence, which is always a crowd pleaser. This is not that kind of show. This is something quite different. So people just have to be prepared for something highbrow because I feel like it's like a down and dirty soap opera. It's just not necessarily going to throw everything out there in the first episode that people expect to see in an HBO show. So at any rate, spoiler-free zone is now over, and I'm going to dive into some specifics. So this episode has a couple of really, really fascinating dream sequences. Pope Pius XIII is brand new to his role, and you can already tell he's going to be a massive figure of controversy. He has all these wild dreams of like crawling out of mountains of babies and then addressing the assembled masses in his first major homily and talking about how... Catholic priests need to be able to have gay marriages between each other and need to be able to masturbate and use condoms and you know people are fainting and dropping dead all around and then he wakes up from the dream and you can't quite tell if that dream reflects his attitudes or not because in general he seems to be very austere. I don't know if he's conservative or not because I haven't seen enough of the show to know kind of where he stands on certain divisive social issues but you can tell he follows his own counsel apart from Sister Mary, played by Diane Keaton, who helped raise him. And it seems like she's really the only person in this world that he can trust because he knows that the politics within the church or within the Vatican are so heated. I mean, the stakes are so high that he's basically in a state of all-out war from the word go, rallying people to his cause, finding informers, and fighting against someone who's in, I don't know enough about the the terminology of the specific roles that people play, but essentially the, the man who should be the right-hand person to the Pope, all of his priorities are not those of Jude Law, and Jude Law immediately starts trying to make him fetch coffee and kind of cutting him off at the knees and making him report directly to Diane Keaton. So it's interesting to see that power struggle right from the word go. What I like about Jude Law's character, though, is that while in theory he's kind of a good, pure human being, he's also kind of a complete... He's not even human in a lot of ways. He has almost no appetite. He seems to have no sins or vices. He even at one point says, my only sin is that my conscience does not accuse me of anything. 
and he has this hysterical scene where he's confessing to a priest and he admits that he doesn't even believe in God. And then he says he's joking. Like it's really, really hard to know what he genuinely believes because everything he says is for strategic advantage or to accomplish some goal. And it's, I can't wait to find out more about him. And luckily, episode two plays tomorrow night. So yeah, HBO is going to be releasing these guys in rapid succession, which is great for a fan because waiting an entire week for the next episode of a show that you're into is a unique form of cruel and unusual punishment. Also really like this one scene where the chef who has been assigned to Jude Law comes in and starts smothering him with kisses and kind of maternal affection. And he immediately shoots her down and basically explains how friendly relationships are very dangerous. Friendly relationships are vague and ambiguous and cause problems. What he prefers, very formal relationships. Formal relationships are very clearly defined and last forever. So it's just a really, really well-written character. Not necessarily the world's most likable individual, but a fascinating character. And I just like watching smart, evil people <laughs> in action on TV. They always fascinate me. And the director, Paolo Sorrentino, with the help of some other writers, is doing all the writing. And to my knowledge, I believe Paolo Sorrentino is directing every single episode as well. So I like this new phase of TV. I mean, everyone always talks about very flippantly how we're in the golden age of TV, which is true. But for me, I am a fan of cinema. And I like, I like a director-driven medium. And when I see guys like David Lynch directing the entire upcoming season of Twin Peaks or someone like Paolo Sorrentino exercising such huge influence over an entire season of TV... That for me is very, very exciting when I see directors, whether it's Woody Allen or Hal Hartley or Whit Stillman or whomever, taking a break from film in order to do an, a season of TV. I like long-form storytelling. I like episodic television. I like complex continuity. So I'm very, very excited by this new phenomenon I see at work. At any rate, can't wait for episode two. Comes out tomorrow night. Hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the show. I think you'll dig it or most people will dig it. Give me a shout on Twitter at Colbrax if you want to talk flicks or MMA or comics or video games or any of the things that give my life meaning and purpose. And please don't forget to check out my podcast, Wrong Real, which can be found over at iTunes or Stitcher Radio or Google Play Music or whatever platform you prefer. Thank you so much for watching and talk to y'all later.